Hello lovely people, this week I want to talk about The Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Marie Crowhurst. I enjoyed this book, but I also have some mixed feelings on it, so I wanted to just like sit down and have a chat. Um, the Illumination of Ursula Flight follows Ursula Flight. Um, growing up in 17th century England, um, she is born on the night of this comet and um, as she's brought up her father is like a scholar so she is um, taught to read, taught Latin, taught stuff like this, so she's like educated. Uh, she has aspirations of being a playwright and essentially this follows her life and it's sort of like a coming of age 17th century romp. Um, I want to initially start by talking about good things I liked about this. First of all, I feel like the voice of Ursula in this is very clear and defined, like she's got a very strong... The I'm about to make a comparison which is no way to do with the actual topics of these books, but when I read Eleanor Oliphant, Eleanor's voice was so like clear and I could like... I knew I was with Eleanor. It's sort of the same here, like I knew I was with Ursula for the whole time, like she's a very like the personality comes through very well in the well, way that this is written. Um, I also really liked the form of this. Um, it's a mix of sort of first person narration from Ursula and then also um, sometimes she it goes into like a play script, whether that's because it's a play that Ursula has written or Ursula is um, portraying events that are happening to you but through a play, very much drawing on, because this is drawing on restoration theatre, like the plays that Ursula is writing are restoration comedies and dramas and stuff like this. So I, there was something about the way of using this restoration play style to show you the actual things happening in her life that I thought worked really well, because um, restoration theatre was always quite over the top, you know, like um, scoundrels and everything like this and so doing that but doing I don't want to say mundane but like bringing that to like an ordinary sphere of Ursula's actual life I really enjoyed it I thought that was really good I also think if you're someone who's really interested in hot reading historical fiction and you want to read some 17th century stuff this is a really great book looking at 17th century England you know like I very much felt like she'd done her research whether that's um, because of using a specific wording and stuff like this which would have been given to the time like that sort of thing I just I felt like as a 17th century romp it was good moving on to things that I was had mixed feelings about one thing I will say and I don't know if that's to do with how this book was marketed to me or if I just misunderstood I thought that actual restoration theatre and the theatre as a topic would come into this book much sooner than it did so whilst I understand that Restoration Theatre runs throughout because Ursula's own narration is drawing on Restoration Theatre, I also expected theatre to have a bigger part. For me, it didn't really come in until definitely over halfway through, maybe even three quarters of the way through, about like 300 pages in is when we really got to like the theatre. And like, I've had it a couple of times. This is just my own thing. This is not actually to do with this book. I've had it a couple of times where I've picked up books because I thought they were going to be about the theatre and a character being heavily involved in the theatre and then they turned out to be about completely different things and it's been disappointing for me. So um, it happened with Philippa Gregory, I can't remember the name of the book, and then it also happened with Effie Fox's The Somnambulist, which I thought was all going to be about theatre and then it wasn't. So like, maybe that's my own thing, but I wanted more actual time in the theatre, I think. Another thing is, um, I had a lot of fun reading this, Ursula is quite witty, quite humorous at times, I really enjoyed that, but the plot was very predictable. At no point did something happen and I was genuinely surprised that that's what had happened. Like. This is a narrative which I feel I have read before and there were some nice touches which made it a fun, enjoyable read, but it is still something which I, I, I just, I felt like I wanted a bit more from what it was giving me. Maybe some, maybe you'll disagree with me, maybe you were kept in suspense the whole time. I was, I felt, I just felt like for me, 
I wasn't reading this because of the plot, because I could see where the plot was going. I was reading this because I really liked the voice and this interesting narrative style. I don't think I actually mentioned that there's also like diary entries and like font, different font happenings go throughout this. So as like a physical piece of media, which I'm consuming, I enjoyed the variety within that. I just would have wanted it to just be a little bit more surprising, I think. I don't want to go into any more detail because I don't want to go into spoiler territory. My hope is that this is just like a little spoiler free. What was my reading experience like? I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's probably more of like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I just, again, wanted a little bit more. But I think this is Anna Marie Crowhurst's first novel. And I think as a first novel this is really promising. Um, I would be interested in reading more that she writes to see what she explores. And also haven't read like a 17th century historical fiction thing for a while, so that was really nice. Um, those are all the general thoughts I had. How did you find it? Did you absolutely love it? Did none of these things bother you? I hope that's the case, because it was a really enjoyable book. Um, I would love to hear how your reading experience was. I would love to hear if you have any 17th century historical fiction reading recommendations for me, because I feel like most of my consumption has been like non-fiction. Um, I'm going to call it a day there. I hope you're having a really lovely day, and I will see you next week for something different.